Do you know the difference between DBFS, DBVU, DBU, DBV and LUFs? It's a pretty confusing topic, so we're going to do our best to demystify those letters and give them some meaning. Caution, it's going to get nerdy. Decibels have long been the format by which we measure sound levels, be it in the studio or in science. However, it didn't start out how you may have imagined. Decibel is a measurement equal to one tenth of a bell, a measurement convention named in honour of Alexander Graham Bell, the inventor of the telephone, originally used to define the measurement of transmission loss and power levels in telephony, the science of the electronic transmission of the voice. Once it had been adopted by science, the unit became known to express either a relative change in signal level or an absolute signal value. In the case of absolute values, the numeric value expresses the ratio of that value to a fixed reference point. This is why we often see different suffixes on the end of the decibel notation. DBFS, DBVU, DBU, DVV, and so on. The letter denotes what the fixed point of reference is that the value is relating to. For example, in DBV, the V stands for voltage. Let's dive deep and explain each of these scales in detail so you can understand them for your own productions. First up, DBFS, decibels full scale. This is the measurement for sound amplitude in digital audio systems. This scale tops out at zero decibels and moves down into negative numbers and cannot pass over zero dB into positive numbers. If the audio signal tries to exceed zero dB, hard clipping will occur and the crest of each signal oscillation will be quite literally clipped off. But what is clipping? In an analog system, the signal will clip or distort when there's no remaining voltage available to describe the louder signal. The voltage has reached the highest level the system can reproduce and so any signal that tries to surpass this level gets clipped off, they hit the ceiling and they're flattened. In digital audio, clipping occurs when there are no remaining data bits available to encode the signal, resulting in digital noise or distortion. Again, the signal cannot go any higher and is flattened at the crest. However, a digital signal that doesn't contain any samples at a level of zero dBFS can still be clipped and thus distorted due to the process of recreating the analog form of the audio signal in a process called interpolation. The audio samples give raw data in the form of a value at each sample point and the interpolation process reconstructs the analog audio wave by creating an average between each sample point. Due to the way the analog audio wave is smoothly transitioned between each sample instead of stair-stepping, once the signal reaches its highest point, the inter-sample peak can still reach higher due to the curvature of the signal wave. It won't simply stop dead like a stair-step. If this curve passes over zero dBFS, you get inter-sample distortion. You may not see your meters clipping, but there may be distortion in your audio, which can result in your music being reduced in volume by streaming services. This is the reason why Mark leaves minus one dBFS of headroom in his final exports. That one decibel of headroom allows for any inter-sample peaking to not exceed the upper bound of digital audio, allowing for a cleaner signal and is part of the requirements for Apple Music Masters. If this headroom isn't allowed, there's a chance that any conversion that happens on streaming platforms can push any subtle inter-sample distortion into a worse state. In terms of what zero dBFS actually equates to depends on who you ask and where you are in the world. No single standard defines conversion between digital and analog levels due to the differing capabilities of different measurement equipment. Instead, the conversion level is chosen as the point at which the best compromise between typical headroom and signal to noise levels of certain equipment is defined at. In most European countries, zero dBFS is equal to plus 18 dBU, in certain US installations it's plus 24, and in Japan it's at plus 22, but certain manufacturers also have their own calibrations, so it's a bit of a complicated area. So what's DBU? This is gonna get really confusing really quickly, so we're gonna keep it short to avoid frying any brains. DBU can be used as a measurement of voltage regardless of the impedance of a circuit, but is denoted in measurements to be calculated to measure the amount of voltage that would dissipate one milliwatt of energy into a 600 ohm load. 
In professional audio, equipment can be calibrated to show zero on a VU meter sometime after a signal has passed through the system at plus 4 dBU, and in consumer audio electronics, the test signal is at minus 10 dBV, which we'll come to in a moment, although often in professional equipment, you can choose the calibration level of metering via a switch. Unless we deep dive into electrical calculation formulae, which we're definitely not going to do in this episode, that's all you need to know for dBU. DBV is related to DBU in that the DBV level of a signal is a measurement relative to one volt of signal, regardless of impedance, unlike the DBU requirement of 600 ohms. This is usually used to measure microphone sensitivity and also used to provide a calibration measurement level for consumer line level audio electronics by measuring signal against a voltage constant. Up next is DBSPL, the most common usage of decibels in reference to sound levels, SPL standing for sound pressure level. SPL quite literally measures the amount of pressure applied to a measurement device, usually in air and other gases, but also applicable in water using different reference points, just like how the human ear works. As a reference, one pascal of pressure equates to 94 decibels SPL. 0 dB SPL corresponds to the smallest sound pressure that can be detected by the human ear, but of course this is so quiet that you'd only hear it in an anechoic chamber. Just like we mentioned in our 32-bit audio theory video, when we measure the volume of things such as Flopcat eating chicken coming in at 45 decibels, a rock concert at 125 and a jet aircraft taking off at 130 decibels, everything we measure for volume levels on this scale uses the dB SPL measurement, the amount of pressure the sound will exert in the atmosphere. Because of this, dBSPL can be converted directly into another unit, such as pascals, for reference in other situations. dBVU is used on volume metering devices to indicate the maximum distortion-free level that can be handled by the device, 0 decibels VU. Any signal above 0 decibels is in the danger zone for becoming distorted, however it depends on a system-by-system -system basis as to how profound this effect will be. Certain analog mixing desks may have considerable headroom above 0 dB VU to allow for peak volume levels. On VU meters in a door, the zero point is usually calibrated to around minus 18 dBFS. dBA, B, C, D, G, and Z, or Z for the Americans watching, are all variants of measurement weighting when measuring sound pressure level, SPL. A weighting is applied to instrument measured sound levels in an effort to account for the relative loudness perceived by the human ear and, just like the human ear, effectively reduces the lower and higher frequencies that the average person cannot hear. The raw measurement data is adjusted to add the weighting of the A curve to provide the relative data needed for things such as evaluating environmental noise and industrial noise as well as for assessing the potential for hearing damage at different sound levels. B and D weightings are no longer used in many measurements as they are considered less precise at loud volumes. D weighting tends to only be used in measuring certain types of jet engines on military jet fighters, so not really relevant for music production. C weighting uses a flatter response and is more accurate for higher sound pressure levels, often 100 decibels and above, and is more characteristic of how the human ear behaves at louder sound levels. C weighting is also used on many sound level meters. G weighting is used for measurements of infrasound information from about 8 Hz to 40 Hz. And the last of the weightings, Z or zero weighting, is a flat frequency response from 10 Hz to 20 kHz with a tolerance of 1.5 dB. This response is called a linear response. Finally, we come to LUFs, loudness units, full scale. Contrary to the decibel scale in which we measure volume, LUFs measure loudness, the perceived amount of sound we hear. When music is mastered before release, LUFS metering is used to make sure the signal is at the right perceived loudness for its intended platform and audience. Although each platform does periodically tweak its recommended levels, Spotify accepts music at minus 14 LUFS, Apple Music at minus 16, YouTube at between minus 13 and 15, and music destined for CD is loudest at minus 9 LUFS. If the recommended loudness unit levels are exceeded, the services will quite often turn the music down, leading to horrible limiting artifacts and just a generally unpleasant sound. There are four subdivisions of LUFs which can be used to evaluate the loudness of a signal over different periods of time. 
Momentary measures loudness over 400 milliseconds. This is useful for gauging what's happening to the music in terms of transients and dynamic range on a beat by beat basis. Short term measures loudness over between one to three seconds. Again, this is useful for determining information on transients, but on a slightly broader scale. Long term, also known as integrated loudness, measures the whole program material. This is the most important value as we can see what the perceived loudness of our music is as a whole. Finally, true peak measures inter-sample peaks, meaning we can avoid any inter-sample distortion as mentioned earlier. Hopefully I've not totally blown your mind and left you foaming at the mouth, and I hope you've found this video useful for your future productions. If you want to find out more about the theory behind 32-bit recording and why clipping is almost impossible when using it, then check out the video on your screen right now.